Hello, welcome back to Sabir CAD and my series of tutorials on mechanical modeling. Hope you're all doing fine. In here, I have a mechanical drawing and all the dimensions required to create this drawing is given. In this video tutorial, I'll show you the procedure to create this mechanical model in three dimension using the best procedure in solid modeling. After creating this model, we will perform dimensions on various planes on this model because without dimensions, the drawing won't be complete. Then we will also see the procedure to create drawings from the 3D model. We can have elevations, isometric drawings, as well as sectional drawings. You can get the 2D drawing as well as the fully dimensioned 3D model of this project from my website sabircat.com. Just click on the tutorial file section. All these things and more is coming up, so stay tuned. Now let's get started with the 3D modeling part. And this view is in fact a southwest isometric view. If you need any clarification related with the view generation in AutoCAD, please refer my introduction to 3D part 1 video in my channel. I have provided link in the upper right corner as well as in the description section. Now let's go to southwest isometric view by clicking on this hotspot of the view cube. Next I am going to create this top part. For that I have to create this left face and uh, extrude it. So align the UCS by going to Visualize tab and take the UCS to the left. It is parallel to the left face. Now let me just create this rectangle. When you look at this figure, you can see that the dimension of this rectangle is 110 by 62. So let me just create that first. So I'll click on the rectangle command and I'll click to define the first corner over here and I'll go to dimension option and the length of the rectangle is 110. And uh, the width is 62. Now just click to define the opposite corner. I didn't set the limits properly. So obviously the rectangle will go outside the screen. So just double tap the scroll wheel of the mouse to get the rectangle within the screen. Next we have to create this fillets at the corners. For that I'll go to fillet command and I'll go to radius option and I'll give a radius of 12 and I'll click these edges to be filleted one by one. Next, I have to extrude this profile through a distance of 12 units, which is given here. So I'll click on extrude. Now I'll give a height of extrusion of 12. Next, I'll create these two holes at the corners. For that, I have to construct circles. The geometry of the figure indicates that the circle and the arcs at the corners are concentric and the diameter of these circles are given as 12. So I'll go to circle command and I'll choose center diameter method and I'll keep the cursor over here and I'll just make a click. Since the center is activated in my O snap, you can see that here. Okay, the center point is identified and the diameter is given as 12. So I'll type 12. Now I'll repeat the circle command by right clicking and repeat circle. Choose the center here and just give an enter because the region radius will remain there. Next I'll execute press pull command inside these circles to create holes. You know that press pull is a combination of extrude and subtract. So I'll just make a click here and drag all the way, click and drag all the way. And you have created holes here. Just go for a shader representation and you can take a look. Okay. Next, I'll create this component in front. For that, I'll make the profile which you see here first, then I'll execute press pull command in it. So all the dimensions are given. Here this distance is given as 50 and this is 22 and this height is 62 minus 12 which is 50. So let me just create those lines. So I'll click on the line command and I'll choose my first corner here and just activate the ortho mode by pressing the F8 function key or just click on this icon. If it is not active then type the distance 50. Next I have to create this line with a distance of 22 units. So I'll repeat the line command by giving an enter and just click here and type 22. Next I'll go to move command and select this as a base point and the second point when I'm asked to give I'll go to shift right click and choose from point option and I'll use this as a reference point and I'll keep the cursor in the downward direction and I'll type a distance of 50. Because you know from point option will let you locate a point based on any other point that's exactly what I've done. To complete this profile, we have to create few more lines and this distance is given as 10 units and this distance can be obtained from the existing dimensions. 
and this distance is 50 and from here to here it is given as 40. So 50 minus 40 is 10, half of 10 is 5 on both sides. So this is 10 and this is 5. Let me draw those lines. So right click and repeat line, just click here and 10 down and 5 leftward and just connect with this line and same thing you can repeat on the other side 10 5 to this end point next we have to create this arc for that I'll construct a circle with a diameter of 30 so I'll go to circle send a diameter method pick the mid here and the diameter is 30 okay next I'll move this entire profile but this mid as the base point and mid of this edge as a second point. Next let me go to press pull. Just click this inside portion, drag all the way backwards to create this hole and press pull inside this portion, drag all the way forward and you can give this distance as 23. Okay, so that is done. You can erase these two profiles since it's no longer required. Even this profile can be erased, all those lines are not required. So we have created two components. Next we have to create this component at the bottom. For that you have to align the uses with the base. So I'll go to visualize tab and align the uses to the world so that it will go to base and that is the best method to align the uses with the base. Now I'll go to polyline. Start from here. Then this distance is given as 45. So I'll give 45. Then this distance is 110 and back to this corner then right click and close. Next we have to fill at the corners with the same radius of 12. So go to fillet and click the corners. It's filleted and this corners are filleted. Next I'll extrude this profile through distance of 12 units. So select it and give height of extrusion of 12. Okay now these two circles are to be created. So I'll go to circle command center diameter method, choose the center point and the diameter is 12. Create a similar circle at this corner as well. So just give an enter to repeat the circle and uh, just give an enter to choose the same radius. Next I'll press pull the circle all the way straight down and the circle all the way straight down to create these two holes. Okay now we can see two lines here that's because this component and this component are two different objects. So choose union command from the solid editing panel and choose this component as well as this component and give an enter. Now you can see that these two lines disappear. Next we have to create the slot at the bottom. For that we will create a rectangle with the dimension of the slot. The dimension of the rectangle is 60 by and the small height is 6 because this is 12 and the small distance is given as 6. So 12 minus 6 is 6. In fact that rectangle has to be created on the front face. So let's align the uses with the left face. So I'll go to visualize tab and align the uses with the left again. Uh, then uh, go to rectangle command, click the first corner over here and go to dimension option and the length is 60 and the width is 6 and click to define the opposite corner point. We have created it. Next move this rectangle and with this mid as the base point and this mid as a second point. Now it's aptly positioned. And next we will execute a press pull command and move the mouse all the way straight backwards and leave. Now you can see that the slot is created. So this is how you create this component. But before saving this figure, it is better to erase all unwanted lines in this. Because when you perform press pull command, original profile will remain there. So we have to get rid of all those profiles. How will you do that? For that just select the object, right click and erase. Now you can see those profiles which you have used for press pull operation. Now give move command and select all these profiles, move it leftward or on a separate location. Now how will you get those erased object backed? For that you can give oops command because oops is a very tricky and intuitive command in AutoCAD using which you can restore the most recently erased set of objects. So let's give it. Oops, it's back. Now you can erase all these profiles. Okay. So this is how you complete the first part of this tutorial that is the modeling part. Next we'll move on to the dimensioning part. But before proceeding further on dimensions, I strongly recommend you to watch an exclusive video on dimensions in my channel SabirCAD so that you will get an idea about performing dimensions on various planes on a 3D object. 
But even if this is the case, I'll show you some sample dimensions so that you will get an idea about performing dimensions in 3D. Now let me change the visual style to wireframe. In 3 dimension, if you want to perform a dimension on a particular plane, all you have to do is just align the UCS or XY plane onto that plane. And the easiest option to align the UCS on a face is go to visualize tab and you just select the face option of UCS command and click on the desired face. Once you click on a face, that particular face will be highlighted and just give an enter to accept that orientation. Now I'll change my color to a different color so that I'll be able to easily identify the dimensions. So I'll press Ctrl 1 to get the properties palette. Now I'll go to general properties and I'll select color to this particular color and I'll give OK. Next I'll go to annotate tab then I'll come to dimensions choose linear when I'm asked to select the first extension line origin I can pick here and this is a second extension line origin and you can choose the dimension line location by clicking a point over here. This is the size of the dimension. If you want to enlarge the dimensions, you have to go to dimension style manager. I'll come back to dimension panel and over here I have a dimension style manager launcher. Just click on that and go to modify and come to fit and use the overall scale factor. I'll change the overall scale factor from 1 to 1.5 and I'll give OK and close. Now you will see the changes happening on the screen. Now let me just perform this dimension. For that again I'll repeat the same sequence of steps. Go to linear, select the first extension line origin here and the second extension line origin here and this is the dimension line location. Likewise you can perform all similar kind of dimensions. Now I want to perform dimension on the front face. For that you have to just repeat the same sequence of steps. Come to visualize tab, align the UCs on the front face using the face option and just give an enter to accept this orientation. Now I come to annotate, choose linear and select uh, these two endpoints and you will see the dimension is 60 there and uh, you can again repeat the same linear dimensions between this as well as this endpoint and you will get the dimension as 110. Now this can be moved slightly upward just click here and you will get a grip here just using that grip you can move it and relocate it in a convenient location. I'll click here after activating the ortho mode. So this is how you perform dimensions. Likewise you can perform dimension on all the required phases by aligning the UCS on the desired planes. I also would like to show you the leader dimensions. When you look at this dimension you can see that it is not aligned on a particular plane but instead it is aligned with the view plane. So you have to align the UCS with the view plane before you perform this dimension. Go to visualize tab and click on the view option. Now you can see that XY plane is parallel to the view plane. Next let's go to the annotate tab again and I'll choose leaders and I'll take multi leader. In fact I want this particular arrow to start not from the center but from a point somewhere over here. If you want to choose such a closest point you have to just shift right click and choose nearest and I'll choose a point here. Okay. Now you can just turn off the ortho mode. Now you can just click a point over here. Then you can perform the dimension. This leader dimension start with the diameter symbol. So you can just click on the symbol and choose diameter. So you will get that symbol here. Type the text 12. Then space x then 4 holes. So you have written that text. And you can just close the text editor. Now when you look at this text you can see that it is slightly big when you compare with this text. So how will you control the size of the leader dimension text? For that just click on the leader panel and click on the multi leader style manager and click on modify and click on the content tab here the text height is given as 4 bring it down to 3 and give OK and close. Now the size of the text is reduced. Next we have to indicate the synetic marks. For that I'll just click on center mark in the annotate tab and click on the individual circles. So you will see the synetic marks automatically appearing. And when you create the synetic marks you can see that you don't have to align the UCS on the respective planes. The fully dimensioned 3D model will appear like this. You can perform rest of the dimensions in the existing figure and complete the dimensioning. Next we will move on to the method to create various views from this 3D model as drawings. That will be uploaded as a separate video because this video has almost reached 15 minutes duration. Please watch out for it because that topic is very important and interesting. Please do hit the like button of this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel Sabircat if you haven't subscribed to it already and do recommend my channel to your friends who are interested to learn AutoCAD project based. Thank you so much for your time. May God bless you all.